Hello everyone. Um, in this video I want to touch on something that we talked about during the uh, data visualization and GIS workshop that was held at Mount Sinai uh, a few weeks ago. Uh, and this is a, a tool, it's a really neat tool that's come out of uh, Density Design, which is a uh, design research lab out of Politecnico di Milano uh, in Italy. And uh, their tool is called RAW. You can find it at raw.densitydesign.org. Um, and it basically provides you a web interface for doing some really great data visualization um, using your own data uh, and taking advantage of the uh, fantastic D3 JavaScript library. So once you're on the page, uh, you know, it's pretty easy to get started. You can just click on this Use It Now button. If you scroll down a little bit further, it'll kind of explain here the features. It uh, talks a little bit about D3. If you're not familiar with D3 and, and you kind of want to see uh, s some some really creative uh, data visualization uh, examples uh, that are created using JavaScript, you can check out the d3.js library a little further. Um, something that uh, was put together by a gentleman named Michael Bostock, and uh, it's it's being used widely uh, in a number of um, different areas. Uh, the tool is pretty customizable. I mean, the, the real advantage here is that you don't have to be a, a JavaScript programmer. Um, D3 can be a little difficult to get into. Uh, and I, I think that, that a tool like this that Density Design folks have pulled together is, is a really nice way to um, give yourself a little more exposure to some of the different types of ways that you can uh, experiment with the, your own data visualization. Um, so, you know, you can, uh, if you want to learn a little more, they've got some tutorials and some other things. They've even got a Google Groups. Here's kind of an example of the layouts that are available with the tool. Uh, tree maps. Uh, they've got some circle uh, packing um, and uh, bin scatter plots and, and so on and so forth. So, uh, let's go ahead and jump into the tool. Now, for this example, I'm using some data um, from College Insight. There were a couple of um, news reports uh, probably about a month ago, I suppose, uh, that's talking about sort of the, the um, increasing burden of the average student debt among uh, graduates. And uh, this, this group's put out some pretty interesting data sets. Um, I, I really like sites like this because not only uh, encourages you to explore the data, but gives you the opportunity to download it and uh, work with it yourself. So you can get to these guys uh, by just going to college uh, dash insight.org and um, kind of flip around here. Uh, if you want to start working with the average student debt, you can just simply click on it. It takes you to a page and it's a pretty easy um, wizard to kind of follow. Just pick the, the topic that you're interested in and follow the steps and you'll figure it out pretty quick. And then again, what's really great about this is that there's no need to try and cut and paste any of these tables directly out of the web page, but you can simply download the data as a table. and. Uh, You'll get a nice CSV file that you can then open and start working. So that's pretty much exactly what I did for the data that we're going to work with today. I just used the tool and grabbed uh, a bunch of average student loan debt information for essentially every state in the United States. So I'll show you quickly what that data looks like once you grab it. Uh, so once the table is generated, it's pretty easy to uh, open in Excel and query and sort and do whatever you want. And uh, what also is nice down here is that they've actually added notes down here about citation, where the data come from, uh, you know, any, any copyright relative information, uh, how the data has been released under a Creative Commons license here, uh, and you know, have some, some other links. So it's, it's nice and it's, uh, you have to apply groups like this that at least try and get their data out and, and sort of understand that people want to use um, the data to, to try and recreate some of the analyses that they did. So what I did after uh, kind of parsing through the data here was I, I just grabbed a, a couple of kind of um, kind of general uh, summary information. Now I'm not I'm not really using this demonstration to say anything uh, about average graduate debt per se. Um, I, I just kind of found it was an interesting data set to work with. So the first thing I did was I just grabbed the top 10 states for the year 2011 and 2012 that had the highest average uh, graduate debt. And so that would be these states here, Delaware, New Hampshire, Pennsylvania, Rhode Island, et cetera. And then I, I just basically took those 10 and, and grabbed the same states for the rest of the data set. So 
this is a, a nice data set to start working with. I'm just going to cut and paste this directly out of Excel. And I can do that by selecting my cells and, and uh, uh, pressing Control C on the keyboard. When I go back to the raw tool here, I'll click Use It Now. And it's going to walk us through this nice wizard. By the way, if you don't have your own data, they've actually got some pretty decent data samples here, movies, cocktails, Titanic, and music industry, and it kind of, uh, they're, they're selected based on the types of data and the types of good representation that you can choose. So I'm going to paste my data up here. Um, they, they do a nice check here just to basically tell you if, if the data format looks okay. In this case, it's okay. pretty Okay, so next, uh, once we know that our data is looking pretty good, let's uh, scroll down here. Uh, so the tool is pretty nice. It's going to give us some choices uh, from the D3 catalog of some uh, layouts that we can start using for our data. Uh, so we've got tree map, bubble chart, alluvial diagram, circle packing, circular dendrogram, dendrogram, and bin scatter plot. And with each one of these, if we select on one of the options, it tells us a little more about it. We can also click on the link here to uh, get a little more information about the visualization. Um, so for this data set, let's go ahead and select the alluvial diagram here. Uh, and I, I'm choosing this one because I think it's kind of a neat way to break up um, the uh, debt data. So the next step here under mapping, you can see that it's it's grabbing essentially the columns from my data set, right? So I had three in this case, and it's identifying what kind of data it is. So I've got uh, state, average, grad, debt, which is a number, and another string down here, year. And so with some of these uh, visualizations, it's only going to uh, allow certain types of information in here. So for example, if uh, you wanted to map something by average graduate debt and you choose, I don't know, a uh, tree map and it's not giving you that as an option, just consider changing the data type. Uh, so uh, th that'll work for, for at least numeric values that might happen to be stored as, as text, for example. Uh, so in this case, let's see, let's start breaking up our data. Now the way that I, I want to do uh, this example is I, I want to show the average graduate debt uh, primarily by year. So I'm going to start here. I'm going to grab the year uh, column here. And uh, here's here's what I was talking about. So it's a string data set. It's not going to allow me to uh, call that as a link value. Uh, so I'm going to drop it here to the first dimension. And then let's go ahead and grab average graduate debt here and drop that as my link value. So basically in the example here, my links are these connector lines here, right? So the width basically is going to represent the amount of debt. And if I want to peek at the visualization, I can scroll down a little bit further. And, oh, in this case, it's not drawing it yet. So let's try adding one more variable. Oop. There we go. All right, now we've got our visualization drawing down here. And so now you can see exactly how it's breaking it up. So again, this is, this is really, really nice. Um, because that quickly I've created a data visualization essentially using uh, D3 through this raw uh, interface. Uh, and I can change some basic uh, settings with the visualization here. So this is actually what you're going to export, right? So uh, for example, in, in my example, the uh, years aren't quite in order. So maybe I want to kind of set that up a little more like so or, or whatnot. Uh, I can also change these. Uh, so if I want to change the height, for example, the visualization uh, to something maybe a little larger, I can do that. Same thing with margins, node padding, node width, et cetera, et cetera. Maybe the width is a little too big for really what I need. So I'll do something like 600. So now, you know, once once I've got it kind of set up, um, you know, maybe I want to reorder the states. By the way, the, the Delaware here, you see these two little teeny thin lines. So uh, if, you, if you look closely at the data, these were for years where they actually didn't report anything. Um, so anyway, anyway, just kind of, it's a, another great uh, aspect of data visualization, right? You can kind of explore and, and see things in the data that, that maybe you didn't see on the first pass. Uh, down here, I have three uh, export options. The first is an SVG uh, file. Uh, another is just as a PNG file, which is a pretty straightforward um, graphic file, obviously. Or I can actually export it as um, JSON formatted data. And then finally, if I want to, I can also embed the actual visualization itself directly in a website. So, you know, again, just a fantastic way to start creating um, very easy to use data visualizations using this tool. 
and uh, you know if, if if the pass is any indication of what they plan to do with the future I expect that the number of options here will continue to grow um, so I'd continue to uh, periodically check back and, and see what other uh, data visualization layouts they add so finally let's just go down here I'll just export this again as a PNG file and download the file and once it's generated I should be able to open it up and there you go so you're seeing my transparency mask in the background but you get the idea so from this point you can take the the graphic and and uh, you know drop it onto web page or email it around or stick it in a report um, and that's it so uh, finally it, you know definitely to support um, the great people at raw it's it's not a bad idea to uh, you know, share this this with your friends and and help uh, spread the word about this great tool.